Elrond was the powerful lord of Rivendell, one of the last eleven strongholds in Middle-earth. Elrond was born at the end of the First Era, in the year 532, in the stronghold of the Havens of Syrian, in the region of Beleriand, northwestern Middle-earth. Elrond was also known by the epithet Half-Elf, for he was the son of the mortal Arendelle and an immortal elf named Elwing. His twin brother, Elros, was the first monarch of the great kingdom of Numenor. During the first era of Middle-earth, the sons of the elven lord, Fenor, vowed to retrieve the Cimmerils, three wondrous jewels with great magical power. One of these Cimmerils was in the hands of Elwing, the mother of the twins Elrun and Elros. When the two brothers were only six years old, the havens of Syrian were attacked and destroyed by the sons of Fenor, who killed most of the local inhabitants, except for young Elrond and Elros, who were spared by the slaughter. Elrond and Elros were adopted by Maglor, one of the last surviving sons of Fenor. The twin brothers grew up to be become skilled and courageous warriors, participating in the terrible War of Wrath, where they faced the army of the Dark Lord Morgoth. After the war, Elrond and Elros chose between living an immortal life with the elves or having a mortal existence with men in Middle-earth. Elros chose mortality and became the first king of Numenor. He ruled for 500 years before dying in 442 of the Second Era. For his part, Elrond chose an immortal life and inhabited the kingdom of Linden in the court of Gil-galad, the last king of Noldor. Around the year 1200 of the Second Era, a new enemy named Sauron appeared, in the form of a handsome, fair-looking elf, and using the name Anatar. Sauron attempted to enter the kingdom of Linden, promising many benefits and magical secrets to the kingdom. However, Elrond and Gilgalad were suspicious of that being. Despite his good looks, he emanated an evil energy, and so they drove him out of Linden. But other elves from the kingdom of Eregion were eventually seduced by Sauron's promises and led him into their lands. Sauron convinced the elves of Eregion to forge the Rings of Power, which were used to be as powerful weapons for each race that possessed them. In 1695 of the Second Era, Sauron gathered his evil armies and attacked the elves' homeland of Eregion. It was the War of the Elves and Sauron. Gil-galad sent Elrond, along with a troop of brave elven warriors, to help defend Eregion. Unfortunately, Elrond's army arrived too late and was not large enough to defeat Sauron's troops. After the defeat, Elrond retreated as far north as the refugees, reaching the valley of Rivendell. A kingdom was established there, and in 1697 of the Second Era, it became his new homeland of the Elves. Elrond was the ruler of Rivendell, the last homely house. Gil-galad is said to have offered the Vilya Ring, also known as the Ring of Air, to Elrond. Near the end of the Second Era, Elrond rode alongside Gil-galad in the last alliance of elves and men, which left Rivendell for Mordor. The alliance, which also included elves of Lothorian, men of Arnor, and Gondor, and dwarves, defeated Sauron's army at the Battle of Dagorlad. In this battle, Sauron was defeated. Elrond witnessed the last moments of the conflict and saw the deaths of Gil-galad and the human king Elendil. When Isildur, Elendil's son, cut the One Ring from Sauron's hand at the end of the battle, Elrond advised him to throw the ring into the flames of Mount Doom to destroy it once and for all. But the ring's evil allure made Isildur refuse and keep the ring. Elrond returned to Rivendell where he ruled wisely. Elrond's face was ageless. He was not old or young, though the memory of many happy and sad things were written on him. His hair was dark as the shadow of twilight, and over it was a silver ringlet. His eyes were gray as clear night, and there was a light in them like that of the stars. Venerable in appearance, he looked like a king crowned with many winters, but still vigorous as a warrior in the fullness of his strength. This is how Elrond, the Lord of Rivendell, is described. During the Third Era, Elrond participated in many important events in the history of Middle-earth. He sheltered Isildur's heirs while the lineage lasted. 
The most famous of these sons of men was Aragorn, whom Elrond took in and raised as his son. Aragorn grew up in Rivendell without knowing his royal lineage until, as an adult, Elrond told him the truth. Elrond was also a great friend of wizard Gandalf the Grey. At Gandalf's request, Elrond helped the expedition of the dwarf Thorin Oakshield to retake the Lonely Mountain. Elrond told Thorin that the swords he had taken from the Cave of the Trolls were an elven fabrication. Their names were Glamdring, it would be wielded by Gandalf, and Orchrist, it would be wielded by Thorin himself. Elrond also deciphered the Moon Letters, which could only be read under moonlight on the Lonely Mountain map. This information was vital for the dwarves to enter the mountain through the secret entrance. When Frodo Baggins left the Shire to take the One Ring to Rivendell, Elrond sent riders to guide Frodo to the Elven Fortress. Elrond also helped treat the wound Frodo suffered in his shoulder, the victim of a mortal knife wielded by one of the Nazgûl, spectral beings in the service of Sauron. Elrond slowed the poison of the blade and prevented it from spreading to other parts of Frodo's body. Elrond healed Frodo for the most part, but the wound never completely scarred. At a meeting that became known as the Council of Elrond, with the wizard Gandalf, the elf Legolas, the dwarf Gimli, the hobbit Frodo, and the humans Boromir and Aragorn, it was decided that the One Ring should be destroyed where it had been forged, on Mount Doom in Mordor. Elrond agreed that Frodo Baggins should carry the ring on the journey, assisted by eight other companions, forming the Fellowship of the Ring. Elrond remained in Rivendell until the destruction of the Ring and Sauron's death in the War of the Ring. He then traveled to Minas Tirith for the wedding of his daughter Arwen to Aragorn, now King of Arnor and Gondor. Initially, Elrond disapproved of Aragorn and Arwen's relationship because such a union meant that Arwen should give up her immortality and live until she died in Middle-earth. But Elmen eventually respected his daughter's decision and blessed her marriage to Aragorn. Three years later, at the approximate age of 6,520, Elrond left Middle-earth to cross the sea, along with Gandalf, Galadriel, Frodo, and Bilbo. They set out for the immortal lands of Valinor, where they would meet many of Elrond's former relatives. Elrond's departure was the end of the Elves' days in Middle-earth and the beginning of the Age of Men.